Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk a little bit about my own personal struggle with depression and how I overcame it. And I specifically want to talk about counseling and counselors, and my experience talking to counselors. I often hear people talk about counseling in society in ways that I think can be misleading and can maybe hinder people's ability to find a good counselor. I'm going to make a statement that might be a little bit controversial. In my experience, an overwhelming majority of professional counselors are not particularly competent. Uh, they, they might be okay. Uh, some counselors, I think an unfortunate, unfortunately large portion of counselors, I think actively harm people. Uh, this has been both my experience and my experience in talking to other people close to me. And I want to tell my particular story. I've struggled with depression uh, on and off, and some other problems too, uh, like social anxiety, and I had some troubles when I was in school. Uh, so anyway, I've sought out counseling a number of different times. And usually when I went to seek out counseling, I chose counselors mainly based on what was available to me. So I wasn't seeking out a particular counselor and a particular type of therapy to match what I wanted. I was just going to whatever was free and available. So I went to college, and then later I went to two different grad schools. I have two master's degrees now. And at each of those schools, I went and I got the free counseling that was available to me through their counseling department. I'm the kind of person who enjoys counseling. Like, uh, I enjoy talking to people. And I can be in a state where I'm very depressed. I've even felt like hopeless and suicidal when I was at home alone. But then when I go in to talk to a counselor, because I enjoy that process, I seem a lot better than I, I am when I'm alone. Um, and I just like it. Like, even if I'm not really getting all that much out of the counseling, I still enjoy the process. Because I like talking to people. I'm like a people person. And I really like opening up about personal things. I mean, here I am on this YouTube channel, and I'm doing this all the time, making these videos. So, that just gives you a little bit of perspective. Your, your experience may be very different, but this is my experience. In hindsight, though, when I like years later, when I've reflected on those different experiences in counseling, and I reflect back on the different things that the counselors said to me, I don't think that any of the counselors I saw in, in school helped me very much at all. And I think some of them may have actually hindered my recovery. And I have some very specific examples of ways in which this is true. I think I realized this only when I saw a particular counselor later in life who dramatically helped me in a short period of time. And that was when I realized, whoa, what had been going on with these past counselors? I discovered the counselor who helped me a lot. Uh, basically, the story starts in grad school. My second round of grad school, I was dating someone who also struggled with depression and other mental illness. And she was talking to me about her own experience in therapy, and she said that she found cognitive behavioral therapy to be immensely helpful, and she did not find most other forms of psychotherapy to be at all helpful. And she even went as far as to say that, that they were kind of bullshit, and that like, especially the ones that were rooted in like Freudian psychotherapy. And she said that there was sound scientific evidence backing up that cognitive behavioral therapy was much more effective than these other older forms of therapy. And I was curious, so I went and looked up some research on my own, and I found a lot of evidence validating what she said. It certainly is not the only form of, of scientifically validated therapy. There are a few other types of therapy out there, but I definitely found that cognitive behavioral therapy had a lot more evidence backing it. And I also was a little bit distressed when I learned that a lot of the counselors that I had seen, and the counselors that were at the time available for me to see in grad school, did not practice that type of therapy, and like had very little familiarity with it. So, when I was out of school uh, later, I, I had dealt with a difficult breakup, and I was struggling with depression, and struggling with some other issues, and I sought out a counselor specifically 
who practice cognitive behavioral therapy. And I went through my social network, I started asking people if they knew any recommendations. So I got a recommendation of a particular counselor through people who I knew practiced this. So I went to her, and it was really dramatic how different the therapy sessions were. Most of my previous experiences with therapy involved me going in and doing a lot of talking, and the therapist would listen, and would occasionally give feedback or commentary or suggestions, but I'd say like most of the time they were just letting me talk. But honestly, I don't think this necessarily helped me very much, because when I was depressed, I had some unhealthy ways of thinking, and unhealthy ways of approaching situations. And this counselor who helped me dramatically, who's practicing cognitive behavioral therapy, what struck me as so different about the sessions with her, was that she would challenge what I was thinking, and what I was saying to her, and she would do it in specific ways that were, they seemed very respectful, it didn't seem abrasive, it didn't feel like she wasn't listening to me, she seemed to be listening to me and empathizing with me and understanding me very well. So for example, I would say something like, I'm never going to find anyone to be with, or something like that, when I was talking about uh, my potential for dating in the future. And she would ask me something like, well, do, do you think that's necessarily true? Like, are you completely sure that that's true? Uh, and she would get me to think of counterexamples, or I would say, well, I would like, no one that I'm really interested in is ever really interested in me, or something like that. And she'd say, well, you said no one, has that always been true? Like, can you think of some people in the past who actually were interested in you? And then I would start thinking about it, and I'd be like, oh yeah, I actually can think up a number of examples. And I noticed that when I started thinking up these counterexamples to my negative statements, I started feeling better immediately. Like, this is what was so dramatic to me about cognitive behavioral therapy. A lot of these other counselors, I would see them week after week after week, and I would talk and talk, and it was the same shit that I was saying. And I say shit because that's what it was. It was these ideas in my head that were not particularly true or empowering ways of thinking. And with this n new counselor that I went to, it was just like, bam, she cut right through it. Uh, and it, like, it changed how I felt almost instantly. Like, I certainly didn't overcome the depression instantly. I have, it was a process of many months and, and probably a few years after that, where I, I really started to like, fully overcome it. But like, I noticed an immediate difference. And I think that that was a sign that the therapy was working in the moment. She also recommended some materials to me. She recommended this book, which I totally recommend to you. Uh, it's called Feeling Good by David Burns. It's a little bit of a corny self-help book, but it's rooted in cognitive behavioral therapy, and I found this book immensely helpful. I developed like a practice of writing in a journal that's kind of inspired by the methods in that book. Basically, the reason I'm sharing all this is I think a lot of therapy that goes on out there is complete and utter bullshit. Uh, some of the therapists I had, I think they actually would reinforce some of my unhealthy ways of thinking by just sitting there and being like, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, when I was saying stuff that was blatantly false. Like, uh, when I was in grad school, I w went in and I was just like, uh, the second school I was at was a pretty prestigious school, and I went into the counselor and I was like, I think this school is just a complete farce. That's how I felt at the time. I was not having a very good time during graduate school. And, and the guy was like, yeah, yeah, like, so you think that's true? And I'm like, yeah, I think it's true. And it was this very like rigid, all or nothing way of thinking, and the counselor was kind of validating it. And it's like, yeah, it made me feel heard and empathized with in the moment, but at the same time it kind of reinforced this really unhealthy way of thinking. Uh, the school I was at was Yale, by the way. I think Yale has a lot of bad stuff going on with it, but it's not a farce. There's certainly a lot that I got out of my experience there, and I think that because I was depressed, I was focusing just on the negative things. And so this counselor doing that with me was just like reinforcing my depression. Um, other things that I've heard other people talk to me about that I think are even worse than this, I know people who have uh, been sexually assaulted and raped, and 
have gone to counselors to talk about it, and have had counselors talk to them in like victim-blaming ways. Like they're like, well do you think that you maybe might have done anything to like lead this hap to happen? Like things like that. Like it's been shocking to me, and it's not just like one person that I've talked to, like it seems like it's this widespread cultural problem. Thankfully I don't have experience with a counselor saying anything like that to me. The point is that counselors can do really bad things. I want to throw out one other really bad thing. Um, this, this was more of a common problem back around like 2003-04, uh, but I knew people who had been prescribed uh, medications to take for anxiety, like from the benzodiazepine class of medications, things like Xanax, and they were prescribed them to take regularly. And like, ugh, anyone who knows anything about medications, you're not supposed to take those medications regularly. They're not recommended uh, to be taken regularly, and if you take them like regularly, like they're talking about every day or something, the way you would take an antidepressant, you very quickly develop a, a tolerance to them and a dependence on them. And this is exactly what happened to one of my friends, uh, and she had a really tough time coming off this drug. Uh, it was very unpleasant, the withdrawal experience. These are all terrible things that counselors are doing, and people are paying these counselors. The insurance is paying the counselors, some of the people are paying out of pocket, the school is paying for these counselors. So these people are harming people, and they're getting paid to do it. And because they're in a position of authority, the people getting the counseling, who are in a very vulnerable place, they're struggling with mental illness, these people trust their advice. This makes me really mad. Uh, I'm pretty enraged about it right now when I'm talking about it. Like, I want these people, I, I frankly want some of them to be fired, like some of the people that uh, I've, I've seen these situations. But, what do you do about this? I think the first thing to do is to protect yourself. Uh, I don't think you're necessarily better off with therapy. A lot of people talk about therapy like, oh, go get counseling, you need help, you're struggling with something really serious, get counseling. Counseling isn't necessarily going to help you. It will if you find a great counselor that's like a good match to your need, your, your needs, your communication style, and that practices a type of therapy that is legitimate and that actually works then it, it can help you immensely. But just like picking a random counselor or picking the free counseling at your school might not be a good idea. Uh, look into it first. Um, be careful too about what different counselors actually practice, because like if a counselor knows that you are looking for someone who practices cognitive behavioral therapy, they might overstate their own level of mastery of that particular type of therapy. Uh, I also, after seeing this good counselor, I went to see a second counselor, and I made clear that I was looking for one who practiced cognitive behavioral therapy. After seeing her a few times, it became apparent that she didn't really understand it. That was not a good experience, and I was paying out of pocket, so I feel like I sort of got scammed. Uh, this is my experience. Hopefully you will have a better experience with these things. Uh, I just want to talk about this, because I think these are very important issues. I think that there are counselors out there that are actively hurting people right now. I think that if you're going to go seek counseling, you need to know about these things so you can protect yourself from them. Uh, and I think looking at types of therapy is really valuable. Uh, also, I, I honestly think that one self-help book for me was more helpful than all but one of the counselors I saw. So I really recommend that, and there are tons of other good books out there. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, just let me know. I know this is potentially a controversial topic, especially because I'm making this pretty bold, negative statement about some of the counselors out there. Yeah, thank you.